was kind of the starting point for the documentary. Uh, I, yeah, sure. I guess the starting point was that I talked about Frontier on Banger TV and we started talking and this is friends uh, and admirers of each other's work, I suppose. Well, admirers of each other's work first and then friends. And then Pedram came up with the idea. I never would have thought it's not, it's not something that I would come up with to ask because a band at their level normally wouldn't do something like this, you know? So it had to come from him because it never would have crossed my mind to be like, let's do this. Cause he was doing it at, you know, level of a frontier. Like who's making documentaries in general anymore? Like band DVDs aren't really a thing anymore. Like, I mean, I'm sure some of the, some bands are, but yeah. So that's kind of where it started. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Brad has hit the, the nail on the head. I think we kind of, it, it was quite spontaneous, but I did sort of think, you know, I've seen a few band documentaries. Some of them kind of per- perpetuate the negativities associated with a band touring uh, independently and, and, you know, being self-funded, etc. So I kind of wanted to cast a more positive light on that based on our experience with touring to date, but then also bring Brad along for what was going to be our biggest and longest tour that we'd ever done. So like there was obviously going to be a lot of things that went down with that and uh, wanted to capture that. So it was, it was great. And it was also kind of, for me, it kind of recreated the same vibe of meeting Chad for the first time because like I got to meet Brad in, in real life for the first time. So it had an air of like the first time Frontier had played a show and I met, met Chad and, and all that sort of stuff. So it was pretty cool. Well, of course, the important question is, how was the experience from both sides? Well, first of all, you know, going on a tour with your camera and trying to capture meaningful moments. And then on the other hand, being on, as you said, the longest tour yet, and then kind of having a camera point at you. And also um, the longest tour yet, and you're in a sprinter with nine people there was no extra space um didn't we what weren't we supposed to have a bigger sprinter and then we like didn't like not more seats but like slightly more space or something i think that was a conversation at some point and i, I actually can't remember now i think yeah i think the van that we had wasn't the right van in the end so yeah you're right that, i just forgot about that actually until you mentioned it so we we played extreme tetris van tetris um at the time to get everything in the plus ourselves and we somehow managed it i mean i think we were pretty overweight uh as a, as a van um but we you know we managed it for the, the whole tour and it was uh, worth it the start it was worth it the start because yeah. we, we had all the merch and then as we sold merch uh the van just went up like the yeah. suspension just started to lift <laughs> yeah yeah and then slightly more space like i remember you know, having stuff like jammed in the side of the door when we first started to fill everything out. And then eventually we didn't have to do that. So uh, on a practical level, uh, that was a consideration that made the the tour, you know, it's the longest tour and now it's also the least comfortable you've been. <laughs> um, but no, it, uh, it, was, it was fun, it was cozy. Um, and then, dude, for me, it was wild. I'd never been to Europe before, never been to the UK before. So it was cool, like that's, you know, like that was like a huge like oh i get to go on tour over there um so that was really exciting um it was really nerve-wracking i'd never done anything like this before um i bought all new camera gear and stuff for it because what i had just i didn't feel was up to snuff and i figured i'd you know get some use out of it afterwards and stuff actually when i got back my uh my camera that i shot on this tour went out on uh went out on summer slaughter uh, with brand of sacrifice because Dylan's camera broke. And I was like, I don't want to look at my camera for fucking three months because I've just spent every day using it. Uh, I'm not going to use it. You're my good friend. You can use it. So it's, 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 it's a well-traveled piece of equipment. Um, but yeah, it was definitely nerve wracking. I've, you know, done interviews with bands, but that's like stationary. You set up one, one or two cameras, you have a lot more control um whereas this is like oh where are we today where can we set it up we have time now uh it was definitely difficult like that and then literally just like learning my camera it was a brand of camera that i wasn't familiar with um i don't remember i think i might have or i had talked to a friend of mine who had that camera about i think they came over and showed me the way through it a little bit but 
that's a lot different than doing it, right? So uh, yeah, it was a lot, but it was, uh, no, you know, no better way to learn than to get thrown to the lion's den. So I, I think I did all right with it. Although the one time the camera overheated, I mean, well, the one time it, it overheated a lot. Um, those shows are quite hot, um, especially Leon and Paris. But the one that it overheated that I'm talking about in general is uh, was Prague. Uh, it reheated right when Dan was climbing upside down on the rafters at like this, you know, epic climax of the show. And I was like underneath him, like camera pointed out and it's like overheated. It was overheating regularly during that show. And I'd run outside, let it cool down and run back in. And it just, there's a part in the documentary actually where I used photos of Dan hanging upside down. And that was my best uh, consolation prize for not having the footage, thankfully. Nick uh, being the professional that he is captured it well and I was able to put the stills in there. But yeah, it was hot. It was a hot tour. It was a fun tour. It was a learning experience. It was a life. It was it is genuinely like a lifelong memory that I, I will not I will not forget. And I'm glad I won't forget uh because i've got the documentary to reference that like till the end of time now so um, and if you become senile you can't forget it because you can rewatch it i can rewatch it yeah exactly exactly um no it was it was amazing it was uh, you know our best tour we're fortunate enough that every tour that we've done has gotten better and better every time and then i think bringing brad on board was part of wanting to push things even further as well like it wasn't necessarily the, the stage performance or the live sound or anything had moved forward but just something about the band in general it kind of felt like it was a, like a next right step to do um so it was yeah it was an amazing experience and i think it it was timed nicely i mean that was the last year you know last summer you could do gigs before covid so we, we kept that um we managed to do it before then and uh we also now are working with um avocado booking for all of our european and, and uk booking now so you know that's the, that was the last of the kind of independent tours now that we have avocado on board it will be a different experience which i, I like because it means that every time we're touring the experience is changing and we're getting new experiences out of that so we're yet to do one through avocado but we've got a few things kind of in the works and uh yeah, to be honest, like it, it, with working with Brad as well, it's just been like amazing. He's he's super professional. He has so many fantastic ideas. Like he's just an ideas guy constantly. Like you know, even outside the documentary, he's messaged me loads of loads of things, and we've talked about a lot of different stuff. I mean, most of it has been documentary because we've been working towards it being released. But um, he just comes up with ideas all the time. Um, but yeah, anyway, we'll move on to the next question. I think I've given you enough detail there. Well, you mentioned COVID and uh, th that's of course uh, came after and you, you know, were able to film this, but how does it feel to watch the documentary or go through the footage now, you know, considering what has happened after the filming? For me, it, it, it's it's a bit nostalgic, but not as much as I thought it would be, I think mainly because I've, I've seen it a few times since, you know, the tours, we've kind of I've watched various iterations of the documentary and have been in, like, you know, involved in watching that stuff with Brad. So, you know, I am nostalgic a bit about it, but um, yeah, uh, I think, you know, I'm not like, I'm like, oh, I miss tours, I miss gigs and stuff, but I know that's coming back. And I know that with the change with Avocado on board as well, there's certain aspects of that that's going to make it a bit easier for us as a band um, to be able to focus on other things. So if anything, I'm very much looking forward to seeing the next phase of our touring experiences and, and how that will differ. And uh, just, you know, l looking forward to the, the change. Um, what about you, Brad? Yeah, as far as, you know, nostalgia, it's like, you know, I, I looked at this footage. Honestly, the, the main thing about COVID is it gave me the time to sit down and finish this fucking monster of a project. When I asked Banger about it, they were like, that's going to be a huge task. And I was like, I know, I know, but you don't understand how much it is. I, I, I scrapped it. I was probably a third of the way in and I was like, mm, fuck this. I, I got to restart because I was trying too hard to tell a story mm -hmm. in a way that was a 
creative way to tell a story, not just a, um, you start at the start and you go here, you know, you, you chrono chronologically kind of go through it. I was trying to, you know, we, we start here and we swing here and then we go up here and then we bring it back here. And, you know, there's a reason that there's a classic way to tell a story start at the beginning and, and that and now it's because it fucking works. And I was trying too hard to not do that. And that's something I've tried in journalism too, uh, which is what I, I guess do did more professionally. I've worked more in like marketing and management for bands now, but, um, you know, I've learned a lot in that, like where sometimes you want to avoid the, I don't know what the proper word is, but bricking the article where it's like, if you have three bands that you're talking about a topic, you don't want to go like, this is what band one says, this is what band two says, this is what band three says, but sometimes that's the best way to do it. So anyway, uh, COVID really gave me the time to do this. I mean, I was, I was already on like a pretty good path to do it before because, uh, it, it was it was weird right because i came home from this and i quit my job for this uh i couldn't get the time off and i was like you know what like whatever uh so i had to come home and figure out how i was gonna afford life and then my i was at a slipknot show and my friend jay uh manages a, a music venue here and he offered me to do some door shifts and then it quickly became do you want to do some bar backing shifts and then it quickly became and i just do bar backing shifts because it's more fun and there's more money um and he said yeah so that that kind of enabled me to work a few shifts a month and do decent and then uh focus on this outside of that but yeah there was uh <laughs> there were some mental breakdowns in the middle of this where i didn't know if i was ever going to get this thing done so i think pedram is uh a little too kind when he says I'm a professional. I mean, I, I did communicate through it all. Um, I was telling him, you know, this is where I'm at. This is where I'm at. But their patience, they could have very easily told me to fuck off, you know, like get it fucking finished now. But I think um, the end result speaks for itself. And the timing of when it came out kind of worked out for the best, which I thought I was dropping the ball and it should have came out way before. But it, it, it kind of worked out in in a, in a weird way and it wouldn't have if they hadn't given me time for my and then put the trust in me that I would come through and given me time for my self-doubt and stuff and I learned a lot about myself through the project I learned that I don't really like doing massive projects on my own in areas where I'm not familiar because I get in my head with a lot of self-doubt so it's like a very important project I think in terms of uh setting myself up professionally for the future and like setting boundaries um and i yeah it was a great people that great people that they were great people to do that with because uh, a lot of people wouldn't have had time for my shit you know <laughs> where i'm like i don't know if i can make a documentary oh and it doesn't help that my computer was not really fast enough to handle some of the 4k footage that i shot but we, we may do <laughs>